because they've got you beaten with that. Next slide. But we can work around them. We've got 10 experts here who officially state the star child is not a known deformity. And then, and then there's more down on the bottom, one more on the bottom. But there you go. Um, and these, these guys are on the star child having done a report. And uh, the thing about these guys is they all saw the skull. They all held it and, and examined it and gave their opinion. All the people that you see on the internet that are like saying, oh, it's just a human deformity and all this, you've never seen it. They're just going from reading one report of somebody who said they didn't see it, and they say, I read a report that says it was not real, and so I say it's not real, and like that. <laughs> Next slide. How do internet critics, <laughs> skeptics, trolls explain why the star child was cradle boarded, it suffered from hydrocephaly, it suffered from progeria? Those are the three things that they will tell you. Now, we're going to go over each of those and, and see if that's right or not. Next slide. Cradle boarding, typical cradle boarding, uh, and an x ray showing effects on a human skull. Cradle boarding is when native peoples strap a baby onto a board and the woman carries the baby on her back so she can go about doing her daily work. Well, when you're born, and this, the human that was with the star child was indeed cradle boarded. For that area was very typical, very typical in, in uh, primitive societies 900 years ago. I should have said the star child we found was uh, died, both of them died, they've been carbon-14 tested to 900 years ago, so this was not uncommon. And well, what happens is when you when you put a baby on a cradle board and you you have to strap its head down. You can't just go doing your work like this. The baby's head is the biggest part of its body on a very weak neck, and it'll break its neck or hurt its neck for sure. So you have to strap the head down. And when you do that, you just put a little band around it. The bones are so soft, you're going to get a flattened area about the size of my palm on the back of the head, right down to the end, beyond which it won't go because you've got muscles starting right there, and you'd have to tear the muscles off to to go any further, right? So this is what cradle boarding looks like. Now, next slide. This is the cradle boarding, and this is the star child. Now notice the big difference. The convolutions are there right through, the natural convolutions of the bone. They're not flat. The human, is that's as flat as a board, a table, floor. <laughs> that's not, and you can see the convolutions right here. Now. A moron can see this. <laughs> a moron can see this and know that it's not cradle board. Mm. And yet, you go right onto Wikipedia right now and you will see that it's a cradle board at hydrocephalic, or, or hydrocephalic for sure. All right, next slide. Next slide, yeah, sorry. Now, this is another thing about cradle boarding the positions when cradle boarded. This is how the heads are set up. Well, to be cradle boarded, this guy fits perfectly sitting there and it's you know just grooving, chucking, no problem. Put the star child in that, you know, gonna die in just a few minutes. Again, a moron can see it. <laughs> Next slide. Now, hydrocephaly, different thing than cradle boarding. They always always say it's a cradle boarded hydrocephalic. Hydrocephaly, we all know water on the brain. Well, the water comes in and it and it goes out in all directions. It's like blowing up a balloon. Blowing up, it doesn't it doesn't differentiate. It blows up. It's fluid, and it's fluid coming in, and it's got to go somewhere. So it's for an infant. It, these aren't sutures. These aren't you know closed together. They aren't, and so they'll spread out, and they do, and it just gets bigger, bigger, bigger until the kid dies. What happens is the pressure pushes the brain out the neck hole, like we were talking about, and that that's what will eventually. It doesn't just blow up like a overblown balloon. It just squeezes the neck out, uh, squeezes the brain out through the neck hole, and, and it dies. Next slide. Here's another one, and you see now you could say that the star child might be might have hydrocephaly if this was you know because you can't blow a balloon up and have a crease in the balloon, but if this suture line was fused, then it could. If it was prematurely fused and kids can be born, I don't know if you've ever seen those kids. They don't have any more. They had one in my community when they're born with this thing fused right here, this suture fused. They grow up and their brain grows forward and their eyes go out to the side of their heads. You ever mm -hmm. see one of those, those fish-eyed kids? They would institutionalize them and have to do all kinds of surgery to make it go right. Really sad case, but they fix it now and they have the problem. They, they can suture it and I mean, uh, make a shunt and, and it just doesn't happen anymore. But if this were to be have been fused, then it wouldn't have allowed it to grow like a balloon. Mm -hmm. But, next slide. What we see is that it wasn't fused either here or here because this is the inside. We've got a camera up inside shooting this way of this place right here. See it right there? And you can see the light coming through in different spots. 
it's clearly not fused. It's not just locked like that. It's, it's normal. This is normal suturing. That is too. Next slide. Now, last but not least, look at the vein tracks. When your brain presses up, you could say, okay, there's two kinds of hydrocephaly. There's water in the brain and there's water on the brain. Water on the brain being the more common. It can have sometimes water leaking out in the brain. But water on the brain is the normal standard thing. Well, you see here, you've got these vein tracks where the brain presses up into the soft bone and leaves the tracks. <coughs> Perfectly normal. And you see the same thing with the star child. They're just in a you know, different place in a different way, but there they are. No water on the brain. Moron level. <laughs> Moron level. And mainstream science can't figure it out. Mm. Next slide. Okay, progeria. This is their new favorite because really, I make them pay for that hydrocephaly, you know, creative water hydrocephaly. I make them look really stupid. So they've come up with this one as, a, as an alternative, progeria. Now, in typical progeria victims, their bones do thin out. Because progeria is that disease where you're born and you immediately start getting old. Mm. You start aging rapidly and dramatically and you die about the age. If you make it to 15, you have really done well as a progeria victim. All right? So as you can see, this kid will be, what, three? And, and it's already clear that you know, he's on his way, mm. unfortunately. But that's true, the bones do thin out. So this is why the mainstream jumped on it. Well, the star child has those thin bones, progeria victims have thin bones, but they don't take into account, next slide, that the star child's bone is so much harder. Now, yes, it is thin. Look at me, look how much thinner it is. And yet, when you cut this, and I have with a handsaw, you can cut through this, and it isn't easy, I mean, it's bone. But this is like cutting sheet metal by comparison to this. Mm -hmm. This is really, really hard stuff. Hard stuff, two or three times or more. We don't really know. We don't know how to scale it. I can just tell you from cutting it. And everybody that's cut it, I'm not the only person doing it, five people have cut it, all say the same thing. God damn, that's hard. Mm -hmm. And it is. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. It is really hard. Okay, next slide. Progeria victims have greatly reduced lower faces, and so does the sore child. And this is another thing they say. Well, it's got the thin bones, it's got the thin face. Progeria victim, right? Next slide. No, you'll see this in a minute. But it's not the same skull shape. It's not the same skull at all. It's it's you know it's got the normal brow ridge and nose. It's got the Indian back there. It's it's just not. It's not a progeria victim is still a human, a a very unfortunate human but a human nonetheless with all of the human traits. Their eyes will go into the depth their eyes don't do this, or their eyes would bug out like frog eyes because there wouldn't be any room in there for a normal eyeball. So you got normal eye eyes, they got normal human physiology that the sore child just doesn't have. Next slide. And last but not least, progeria victims nearly always have an open fontanelle that doesn't close. And of course the star child has a you know, perfectly normal fontanelle. Not progeria. Next slide. How do inter internet critics, skeptics, and trolls explain away the star child? It was creative water to have your progeria. And if that one rolled up a little bit, you would see none of the above. The answer is none of the above. None of that's true. None of that. Next slide. So if the star child skull was not a deformity or a combination of deformities and it was not caused by typical cradle boarding or hydrocephaly or progeria, then what the, as my father used to say, blankety blank, was it? Mm -hmm. What the hell was it? 